Welcome back. It may be midsummer, but the local theater scene is going strong. Here with a look at what's on stage is Post Gazette senior theater critic Chris Rossin with his monthly reviews and previews. Hey, Chris. Hi, guys. Good morning. Yeah. So I've got three shows to talk about today and a couple of previews. Great. And two okay. of them are closing this weekend. Uh, the two God plays, two of God mm -hmm. plays, and they're mm -hmm. closing this weekend. Um, one's at. I don't know, which do we have first? The is Act of God, the, I think. Act of God. First. Act of God yeah. at the uh, CLO Cabaret. And the oh, act it's at the public. It's at the public. Yes, thank you. Yes, okay. I've got all three scrambled in my head. I know the feeling. Your job is to uh, sort Unscramble me out. Unscramble your head. Yeah, <laughs> okay, here's the list. Uh, <laughs> act of God at the public theater. Uh, it's uh, set up kind of as a game show or a talk show. Uh, God appears to us with a couple of side men, uh, Gabriel and Michael, and uh, here he is. God has chosen to appear in the guise of this young uh, actor, comedian from Pittsburgh named Marcus Stevens, this charming guy with a gap tooth, as you can see he's telling <laughs> us. Uh -huh. And um, uh -huh. Now, is that painted on, or is that a real deal gap? No, he has a real deal gap. Okay. Um, Marcus is an actor and also a playwright. He lives in New York now, but he comes from, he's, you know, he went to Point Park. And he, um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not obviously a serious show when God appears in this particular way. He says, you know, <laughs> celebrities are my, uh, are my chosen people. Oh, well, actually, Jews also. Oh, there's a lot of overlap. I mean, there's, you know, he does a lot of jokes like that. But um, he has three serious subjects, really. He talks about good and evil, and he says, frankly, I don't understand it, because you people have made such a mess of it, you mm -hmm. people on Earth. Mm -hmm. um, he talks about faith, and he says faith is, you know, something like sausage. You better not watch how it's made. Uh, and then he talks about Jesus. This is the one that hit me the best. He said Jesus ultimately is really someone who came to redeem me, God, for all the mistakes I've made. So not to ruin the show for you, it runs only through this weekend. At the end of the show, God says, you know, I've reconceived the universe. I'm going to go off and create universe 2.0. But you all are going to have to stay here because you've made a mess of this one. Now fix it. Yeah, <laughs> well, fix it. I mean, you just have to sort of live with it. Yeah. All right, yeah. next up is The Christians. What's the your Christians view of that? God show. So The Christians is a, a serious God show. It starts with a charismatic uh, preacher in a, in a large, one of those mega churches that he's mm -hmm. created. Mm -hmm. And he's giving a sermon about how wonderful it is they've created this big church. But he's been thinking and he's decided that the doctrine, which says every, people who don't agree with them, with their religion, sends them to hell, is wrong. And ultimately he says there is no hell. And then all hell breaks loose in the church. <laughs> yeah. And he has to face off then with the church elder, with a church choir, with a young parishioner, with his wife, and mm. most important with this um, associate pastor, a young black man who he'd nurtured in the church, and the church splits. Wow. And ultimately, it comes down to, I mean, there are all kinds of issues here. So, you, you know. Yeah. I, Sounds like it keeps you entertained through the, through the show, though. It, it keeps you thinking. I yeah. mean, there are a lot of things he could have said. I wanted to get up there and argue with him myself, which is sort of the point, I guess. Sure. Ultimately, at the end, he says to his wife, you know, we just don't know the answers now. Let's assume we're going to learn them later. Hopefully, someday. Hopefully. So those are the two And, Ms. Uh, and what God about Miss Ab Abigail? Miss Abigail's, uh, you see, this is not about religion. Miss Abigail's Guide to... Um, Dating, Mating, and Marriage. That's right. <laughs> now, I figured I knew, you know, plenty about all these things at my age. Yeah. And I think that's why my wife didn't come with me. She <laughs> figures if we haven't figured it out by now, what's the hope? But, uh, but there were a lot of people there uh, having a good time. And uh, Miss Abigail is this... Uh, sort of, you know, advice columnist, mm -hmm. and uh, she's Dear got Abby. this, yeah, roughly, although a down market Miss Abby with a thick southern accent, okay. and she's got this assistant Paco with a thick Mexican accent, uh, and it's very cornball and very silly. It took me a while to warm up to it, uh, but then I began to like the improv because they're doing a lot of interaction with the audience. Mm -hmm. um, I like the um, 
the uh, extent to which she used a bunch of books around the set. She has books that are, you know, behavior guides from the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. So the things she read were really silly. Yeah. Uh, she teaches baby. you a couple of useful things. You know how to prepare for your first kiss? No. No. You'll need to know this, John. What? <laughs> the word is true. You say true. True. Oh, and then your oh. lips pucker up. True. And you do I... it with like a hand mirror. True. <laughs> or the back of your hand. Practice. True. Okay. All okay. right, before we start practicing, let's uh, let's get into the previews. <laughs> you have In the Heights at yeah. CLO? The next two CLO shows are In the Heights, which was Lin-Manuel Miranda's show before Hamilton. And it's a wonderful show mm -hmm. about mixed, uh, diverse, peoples in New York under the George Washington Bridge uh, and it's got a lovely mix of different kinds of music certainly a show to see wow. and then the show on the other side of that is the next one is called because they come one every week yeah the next one is called Newsies, Newsies. and it's yeah. set back in the early 20th century when newspapers were important and the newsboys who sold them were important and it's a show really all about dancing uh, oh. Fabulous. Now, I've just seen both of these shows in New York. I haven't seen the CLO productions, of course, but they, as you know, do a really almost Broadway oh, caliber yeah. version. Absolutely. But Next the, up, we've the got last the liar. thing I wanted. Oh, The Liar, right. That's at Kinetic Theater, and I'm sorry, I didn't say that a little while ago. The Christians is at Kinetic Theater, mm -hmm. which performs at different theaters in town, and The Liar is a modern adaptation of a French classic, and I'm sure will be very contemporary. And it mm -hmm. opens at the Kinetic after uh, Christians closes. That's right. Yeah. That's and this right. one that you, that you wanted to talk about as well. Yes, the, Mark Rylance, okay. the great actor who's been here a couple of times in the past, has won three Tony Awards, English actor, he also won an Oscar, mm -hmm. and he's coming, he's working, writing a play about Carnegie and Frick and the Battle of Homestead, yep. and he's coming to do a program called the Battle of Home Shakespeare and the Battle of Homestead, because mm. that's what Mark is most famous for doing. He ran the Globe Theater in London, he did a lot of Shakespeare. Sure. So, well, what's Shakespeare got to do with the 1892 Battle of Homestead? Well, I guess he's going to figure that out. It's a big subject. <laughs> no, it's a great big historical subject with good guys and bad guys and sure. all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff going on. It oh, is yeah. Shakespearean. Okay, okay. So next Thursday night at the Carnegie Music Hall in Homestead Munn Hall, Mark and some local actors are going to do Shakespeare, they're going to do Carnegie, they're going to do Frick. It's all to raise money for the Battle of Homestead Foundation. And the Battle of Homestead is celebrating its, if celebrating is the word, its 125th, 125th. anniversary. That's right. We just year. spoke with Andy 1892. about 1892. Yeah. Right. So that's something to look forward to. That's one night only. Okay. Yep. And well, your, your appearance on this show is another thing that we always look forward to. Oh, Thank yes. you, Chris Rawson, <laughs> Senior Theater Critic for the Post-Gazette, right here on KDKA-TV with his monthly reviews and previews of what's on stage and our regular PTL computer, or er, okay, contributor. <laughs> he's, he's he's a, a thank you, it's catching. <laughs> he's yeah. a theater computer, that's for sure. <laughs> well, we'll be